See, if I like the music, I let it go a little longer. Uh, I'm a big Smashing Pumpkins fan. Welcome back to the show. It is the Vegas Take, Sharp and Shapiro. Glad you could join us rolling out on a Wednesday and uh, coming up here in just a little bit. I've, always, I've been looking forward to, to speaking to this kid because uh, he's extremely intelligent, well-spoken, and an unbelievable basketball player. And I want to introduce him to all of our listeners. His name is David Jenkins, Jr. He is a transfer from South Dakota State where... T.J. Otzelberger was coaching last year, and he is a star. He is a stud. I believe he has a chance to be an NBA player, and he's going to be eligible to play at UNLV next year. He's going to be joining us here live at the bottom of the hour. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Really looking forward to that. Uh, Steve Wynn back in the news. As you know, you know he, he was sued by several women, including one of his personal masseuses who says that you know he forced sexual, he gave her sexual advances, forced her to do sexual acts, and uh, he's thrown out of the wind. It's still called the win, though. And Steve Wynn wants to remain in the casino industry. Well, guess what? The State Gaming Control Board has now filed a five-count complaint against Steve Wynn alleging sexual harassment of several female employees and violating state licensing suitability regulations. Now, I know my co-host, J.D. Sharp, has an opinion on this, but he's not in studio. I don't know where he decided to go. He just decided to leave uh, on a subject that he's very passionate about. So very good timing by my co-host, Uh, J.D. Sharp. But anyway, uh, Wynn uh, was not reached by anyone, but he has denied ever harassing anyone in the 21 months since allegations were first disclosed in a Wall Street Journal report back in January 2019. There's my co-host. He's back. You made it. Where'd you? Was that a restroom break? Where yeah, were I you? Go to the bathroom My place. listeners need to know. Number one or number two? Uh, number, number one. Very, no. very, very brief. There it was t- someone in there, so I had to wait a little it took bit. You there's, five- only two, there's only two restrooms in this place, and there's like 25 employees. It took you five minutes to urinate? I don't believe you. I don't, I'm sorry. Are you, I, did you go number two? Be I, honest. I said I had to wait just a little bit. Did you go number two? Be honest. I, I absolutely did not be do that. All I'm, right. I'm being sincere. Trust me. I'll know if you're lying. I'll know because there'll be less toilet paper in there. I'll know. All right. I believe you. You're telling the truth. All right, JD, we're talking about the Steve Wynn situation yeah. uh, where the gaming board, uh, you know, filed this complaint wanting to ban Steve Wynn from the casino industry altogether. What do you think about this? I think that Steve Wynn, you cannot take away his accomplishments. He is the one that it, I would say he's probably 60% responsible for transforming Vegas. He is a genius with hotels. He is one of the reasons why Vegas is branded as the entertainment capital of the world. I think Steve Wynn has a lot to do with that, and you cannot take that away from him. Uh, has he been charged criminally for any of these accusations? No. No. But there have been payouts, there, just like the Bill okay, O'Reilly stuff. Okay, so there, there yeah. have been payouts. Can I ask you a question? Explain this to me. Uh, maybe you could shed some light on this because I just don't understand. Uh, same same thing with the craft stuff, only I think what Steve Wynn did was far worse. But when you are a billionaire, okay, and Steve Wynn is a billionaire, right? Multiple times okay. over. And you have sexual needs. Why don't you just hire some personal hookers? Why do you make sexual advances on some of your employees? Well, Why would you take – it makes no sense yeah, to me at all. It's because – the hookers are too easy. Prostitutes are too easy. I'm dead serious. It, hookers it, it, are too it, easy. It, it, it comes down to just consistently challenging yourself and, and feeling like you have all the power in the world and anybody is fair game. And I believe that that's probably what happened in this situation. So you think Steve Wynn likes the challenge? Is that what you're I, trying I, to say? I, that that would make that's the only thing that would make any sense because you're right. He lives in Las Vegas. There are access to hundreds of thousands of of women who could who could provide those needs. Okay, but, 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 but he decides to go after those that he believes are unattainable okay, or, or that present themselves but, but, as unattainable, but, which, again, for a guy like that who has gotten everything he wants to, has been overly successful, that's something that, that, that he is going to be interested in. But let's be logical here. An attractive woman, who would be attracted to Steve Wynn? He's old. He's disgusting. He's also okay. uh, legally, I mean, he's, he can't he's see. He's legally blind. He can't see anything. Right, right. So He does have very white teeth, Does though. he really think that an attractive woman uh, wants to spend time with him because of his looks or his charming personality? No, it's about you know, his money. And, 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 and at that point, I think, you know, he, he was... A relatively uh, good-looking guy in his in his early maybe fifty years yeah, ago. Yeah, okay, but, t- but he still doesn't. That doesn't change. You know, he, he he I'm sure he had a lot of success with the opposite of sex at an early age, and he still feels like now that you know he should he should have that same success despite the fact that he is clearly aging and his time on this earth is probably not you know is, is not going to last a whole lot longer. But I think that you know, as you get older, you you still kind of, th- as a male, especially as a a, a a dominant male, you know, a guy who's who again has been very very successful in a number of areas, and one of those areas is with the opposite of sex. I think that you 
you want to believe that you're not really getting older, that you that you still are young. You know, that, the, the guys that, that, that get Botox and laser white in their teeth and get hair plugs. I mean, th- those are people that really want to believe that they're not actually getting older, but they clearly are. I, I would never get hair plugs, by the way. Uh, I but the problem, I think you would look odd with hair yeah. plugs. I, it, the, it would be a different. The problem with me is I have hair. Thing. I have hair growing in the wrong places. That's my problem. But we'll take some phone calls on this. Do you think that Steve Wynn should be completely banned from the casino industry altogether? And we're not even just talking about Las Vegas. Okay, we are talking about worldwide. You know, Steve Wynn paid a bunch of women off. What do you think about this? Do you think he should be banned from the casino industry? We'll take your calls, 257-5396. Again, 702-257-5396 is the number to call. Uh, the first count, first complaint here was uh, failing to adhere to his company's policies regarding sexual harassment in regards to Steve Wynn. The second count uh, addresses uh, Wynn's conduct through his role as chairman and CEO of the company. Uh, third count, explicitly addressing the accusation in back in 05 where Wynn had sexually assaulted a Wynn Las Vegas salon manicurist. And the fourth count focuses on a $975,000 settlement with a cocktail server and her parents back in 2006. The Gaming Control Board said that their investigation found evidence of multiple instances of sexual conduct by Mr. Wynn involving subordinate employees. By engaging in this conduct, whether consensual or not, Mr. Wynn disregarded Wynn's company's policies and procedures. Well, I would agree with that. Again, the number to call. What do you think? Do you think Steve Wynn should be banned from the casino industry altogether? Well, guess what? The gaming board has filed a complaint to try to do that. Number to call. What do you think about it? 257-5396. Again, 702-257-5396. Let's go to Jimmy. Jimmy, what do you think about all this? What's up, Jimmy? Well, you're saying that uh, that uh, uh, Wynn should have just went and hired hookers, but it seems like Donald Trump did the same sort of thing with Stormy Daniels. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. And uh, No, he didn't. Yeah. Stormy Daniels well, did not get paid for that sexual act. No. They had a... Se- oh, really? No, uh, she, th- was, she was paid to keep her mouth shut. Okay, and, and, and this is something else, uh, by the way. Donald Trump was married at the time to Melania Trump, and Melania had just had a child. Completely different circumstance. He didn't go and get a hooker. Okay, Stormy Daniels might be an adult film star. There was no oh, money that... She, she disliked Trump? Is that what the deal There was no money that exchanged... Uh, Exchange places during that time. She so got what paid. What would she do it for? To just to extort them later on? Uh, that's what it seemed like they've been doing. You'll have to ask her that question. I don't know. I don't know the answer to that, Jimmy. I don't know Stormy Daniels very well. I know she has zero credibility. I know that. But you know, she called Stormy How Daniels. About Evanati, who's in on the extortion. Well, that you there's right. Have him on your radio show all the time. Well, and, uh, let me ask you a question. What evidence? Avenatti up and up. Okay. Well, if you want to speak about Michael Avenatti, I'll have that conversation with you because we do have him on all the time. What evidence do you have to show that Michael Avenatti extorted anybody? I'll, I'm I'm ready to hear it. I'm not uh, I'm not like the uh, investigator. I'm just telling you what what it seems like to me. What That's it seems opinion. like to you. I'm okay. So what? So uh, I didn't say you weren't entitled no, the, to it. The, the question is why does it seem like that to you? Uh, I, I didn't say you weren't entitled to an opinion. Uh, I think your opinion is ridiculous because you don't have any of your facts straight. You're entitled to your opinion. So I'll ask you the question again. What would make you believe that Michael Avenatti extorted money from anybody or Stormy Daniels? We could just focus on he that. Teamed, he teamed up with, with Stormy to uh, try and embarrass Trump. and uh, He didn't got, team up. How much money did Trump pay he, her? He, he didn't team up with Stormy to try to embarrass Trump. The reason why he teamed up with Stormy, and by the way, it's called client and, and an attorney. That's what it is. It's not really teaming up. The That's reason. The t- tech. Okay. So she received a $120,000 payment. OK, she wanted to sell her story. She wanted her story to be out there. But we're talking about Michael Avenatti. You said he 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 extorted money and then he hangs up the phone. Right. He doesn't want to have a conversation with it. Michael Avenatti did not extort money from from Stormy Daniels. Stormy Daniels paid a one hundred dollar retainer fee to Michael Avenatti. Obviously, this guy has no idea what he's talking about. Then she had a book deal and he had an agreement with her that if she does have a book deal, he gets half of the profits. That's not extorting. But people watch Fox News and they listen to conservative radio and they think of all the uh, they hear all the the false accusations. It's called a back end deal. Michael, Michael made, he basically took a educated risk and said, okay, I'll take a little bit up front because you have nothing, but I believe this can go somewhere because of the, my ability to, to get you in front of the press and to do interviews, et cetera. And then at that point, once, once we've blown this up to where it needs to be and you've got all the attention, then I'll get paid. That is, that, that is the 
absolute opposite of extortion. GD, I just talked about this last segment, that people have opinions on others just based on their politics. The reason why many people don't like Michael uh, Avenatti is because he's gone after Donald no, Trump and he's made well, Donald Trump look one foolish. One of the reasons people don't like Avenatti is because of the fact that specific news networks have painted him out to be this villain. For anybody and that if, uses... And if, if, if you don't listen to our show and if, or if you if you have seen a couple of sound bites like with him with with Tucker Carlson in an interview or or if you listen to all the charges that have been that have been put against him and you don't have any and it, it comes down to ignorance you, you just don't know who this guy is and, and and when the media paints a picture of someone it you know it creates a negative first impression and that's what's happened with Michael Avenatti. Yeah, and by the way, the people that use the term creepy porn lawyer. First of all, there's nothing creepy about representing an adult film star. There's nothing creepy about that. If you use that term, I'll tell you what creepy is. Creepy is having unprotected sex with a porn star when you're married and your wife just has a child. That's creepy. There's nothing creepy about representing a, a, a porn uh, actress. And you know, Michael Avenatti, he, he wears nice suits. He, he dresses to the nines. He carries himself very well. He's articulate. He's eloquent. He stands up straight. He does not, there, there's nothing creepy about Michael Avenatti. No, not at all. He's an it, extremely it's, intelligent it's just guy. The, it's just the fact that he happens he happened to decide to represent a porn star. Mm -hmm. that, so th that's where the, con the connotation of creepy comes from. It's ridiculous. Which, again, makes no sense. It's completely ridiculous. And anyone who uses that term has zero credibility. I mean zero. Now, listen, if he is convicted of a crime, and I don't believe that will happen, but if it does, then I will be the first one to talk about it, and I will be the first one to be say that I am extremely disappointed. But guess what? You are innocent until proven guilty in this country, and as far as I'm concerned, all I know is he's never been convicted of a crime. The number to call is 257-5396. We'll take some calls on that. Also, we're talking about Steve Wynn. The gaming board has filed a complaint to ban Steve Wynn from the casino industry. Do you think, based on Steve Wynn's history, you think he should be banned from the casino industry? Taking your calls again, 257-5396. Let's go to Sean. Sean, what's happening? What's up, Sean? Yeah, I, I agree. I think he should be banned. I don't, I don't like any of this. I don't think... Harvey Weinstein should ever. I think he should be in prison for the rest of his life. I think all these guys that did, they did this for years. Mm -hmm. I mean, this went on for decades. Yeah, behind the scenes. And these women that, like in the fifties, these actresses and from the fifties, what did they go through just to get a part in a movie? That's a good point. You know, Sean, you make a, you make a good point there, Sean, because publicly we know about a few of these cases with Steve Lynn, right? What what do we yeah. what do we not know, right, Sean? <laughs> exactly. What's behind the scenes? 30 years ago that he did. Yeah, do you think at the age of, of 70 or 75, he all of a sudden decided to do this stuff? I bet you this guy's no. been doing this for 20 or 30 years. You're absolutely right. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, it's I also sick. want to say one more thing. Yeah. Brady is racist. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. I love you, Sean. Thanks for the call. You know man. what, Sean? You, you bring up a good, but I've, I've, actually, I've actually been told by people in the industry that a lot of women do they do kind of sleep their way up the ladder to get parts. But what happened with Harvey Weinstein is he was just so over the top he treated them like slaves. He was he was just completely ridiculous in his yeah. approach to it, and that's yeah. and that's why everyone went forward with him. But it, it, yeah. it is very common for it to happen, mm -hmm. and, and and it's typically consensual. Two five seven five three nine six. Let's go to Marge. Marge, you're next on the Vegas take. What's going on? What's up, Marge? Um, and I, I agree with Sean. I think Brady is racist. <laughs> That's I, two I really votes. I like Brady's calls because it yeah. really gets intense. That's two votes for Brady being a racist. Yeah, he, Thank he, you, Marge. He, he's yeah. very passionate about his opinions. Yeah. Marge, what do you think yes, about this is. Steve Wynn thing? Do you think um, that he should be banned? I don't think he should be banned. Um, I think he should be banned from Las Vegas, um, but you know, maybe other parts of the country, maybe internationally. He's a visionary, and um, I, I think that that can be used maybe as a consultant. He should never ever be put in charge of a company as president or CEO or one of those power positions, yeah. basically. Yeah. And and probably sign some type of an affidavit or something when he goes into a position that says that if if he's ever found, you know, to have done something like that, that that's immediate dismissal or a contract is that's terminated and he has no rights to any any reimbursement on the contract. But and I think any females around him should also be told that mm -hmm. if he even attempts to do something, they need to report him immediately, like, period. But, but let's yeah. be honest, w w without Steve Wynn, he was the first one to put a nightclub 
in in a casino. Exactly. I mean, he, yeah. he's one to add. You know, the 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 day clubs, the the pools mm-hmm. to the casinos. Without Steve Wynn, Vegas's tourism is probably down by forty five or fifty percent. No, I mean, it, right. it, yeah. Vegas is not the entertainment capital of the world, and you cannot take that away from him. You just cannot do that. Marge, it's, and, and look at ahead, the buildings. Yeah. I mean, that he he built. I mean, yeah. they're beautiful. The you know, people people just gawk at that, and I think that that attracts people, you know, as well to to Vegas because it's always pictured that way. Right, exactly. And nobody else had had those thoughts of doing. Yeah. Steve like that. Steve Wynn was instrumental in branding Vegas. Marge, it is always good to hear from you. We appreciate the call two five seven five three nine six. Let's go to Rob. Rob, you're next. What's up, Rob? Uh, how you guys doing? Good. You know, uh, basically, I don't want to waste your time saying everything Marge just said, but that's the point I was going to make. Like him, don't like him, doesn't matter. He made. He got caught up. He lost his hotel. He lost his shares. I don't. I don't see how Vegas benefits in any way in continuing to you know kick the guy. Yeah. If, he, if he didn't build the Bellagio, the Strip stays a bunch of square boxes. Exactly. I mean, you know, yeah, the guy made a mistake. He definitely has paid has paid a heavy price for it. I, I just think enough is enough. I mean, he can't. You can't vilify the guy forever. And well, the Rob city is not what it is without yeah. him. I don't dis- I don't disagree with Rob, but whether he did great things for the city or not, uh, I don't feel bad for him. I guess I'm kind of in the middle on this issue. My opinion on it is this: uh, if they go through with this, I don't feel bad for him. Or if they do, if you, like what you're saying, Rob, enough's enough. Then then I'm fine with that too. I'm kind of in the middle with it, I Rob. Mean, I appreciate many, the call. How, how many jobs do you think Steve Wynn has created? Well, you know, you can. I mean, honest to God, you question. can create a gazillion jobs. It doesn't excuse sexually uh, harassing or assaulting and, and, women. And again, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not suggesting that he should be excused I, for me, his behavior. To, I'm, not JD, saying, I'm, not, I'm not saying that's the case. To me, that's irrelevant. I don't care what he's done for the city. I care about his behavior. You know, I mean, you could do wonderful things for the city, or you could do nothing for the city. It doesn't excuse his behavior. I think we have to focus on the behavior. Does the behavior meet banning somebody? I don't know. Our producer Stein is in just, studio. You know what? Th- this is an interesting story. You know, Wall Street Journal reporting that, and then and you said these allegations go back a, a little ways, but yeah, you know, he uh, told one uh, massage therapist that she had to masturbate in front of him, uh, and then he handed her a thousand dollars cash. Wait, she had to masturbate in front of him? Yeah, for a thousand dollars. And so, and, and uh, one uh, also uh, allegations that he would wear extremely small shorts, expose his genitals when he got pedicures, <laughs> and subjected women to lewd and suggestive <laughs> wait, behavior. Wait, hold on a second. Back up, back up, back up. What, get, get, let's get back to these specifics here. You're saying that he wore, like, what, biker shorts? This guy's like 75 years the old. Wall Street Journal. His testicles must be down to his knees. I mean, that's a great thought. So, no, but like, what? on the one hand, you know, he did <laughs> that create these graphic crime. <laughs> he did create these, these jobs. He did create these jobs, but then according to, you know, these allegations, he then used those positions to blackmail these women. And and all these women chose to be enriched financially as opposed to pursue criminal charges, correct? Well, I mean, uh, I think a part of it is also they might have been afraid of losing their job. I mean, who knows? I don't know. I'm not going to get inside their head. So Steve Wynn's what? fetish is he, enjoy, he likes to wear short what, what, shorts. What, what do you think? And he likes to watch. Hold on. This is important, okay, J.D. Yeah, I need to know the specifics on Steve Wynn's sexual escapades. So sexcapades. J.D., you don't find this uh, titillating in any way, shape, or form? No, I'm, I'm trying to figure out what the uh, – what, what do you think that the, the woman who said that – she, she, he was going to pay her if she masturbated in front of him a thousand dollars. What do you think she made a year working for Steve Wynn? We don't know the answer to that. We and, don't know. And, okay, what she made. and what did she just make from this lawsuit or for, from this from this hush payment? Well, let's go back to him wearing short shorts. I, I find that to be much he, more he interesting. He did make a seven point five million dollar settlement. That's with a lot of money. Manicurist. I would masturbate in front and of I, him I, for seven I, and a half million. I would absolutely. guess. I would guess that manicurist <laughs> probably made. Sixty or seventy thousand dollars a year. Yeah, listen, good. listen. Yeah. I would be his blow up doll. And he she could, just made a hundred times that. He could do whatever he wants to me for seven and a half million dollars. Okay, Steve Wynn, if you're listening right now, this message is for you, Steve Wynn. I'll wear whatever shorts you want me to wear. I'll be naked. I'll wear anything. You could wear whatever shorts you want to wear, and you could be a masturbation marathon. I will sit there in front of you for hours on end and masturbate uh, 30 times if you pay me $7.5 million, Steve. If you like bald Jewish radio hosts, if that's your fetish, I'm your guy. Please give me a call. Stein, can you get Wynn's number and and text him and ask him if, if he would like that done? Well, doesn't Chris Wynn have it? <laughs> I don't know. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I mean, uh, all right, let's 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 take one more phone call. All right, Ron's been waiting patiently on hold. Ron, what do you think about all this? He put a nightclub in a casino, though. Okay. You know, first of all, you're making it hard for me. My girlfriend, you're, I'm, t- I always have to tell you this, Brian. Damn it. <laughs> you're turning her on, dude. <laughs> I'm turning your girlfriend on right now? 
Wow. Well, she's listening to you, and I'm getting texts from her because I'm at work on my lunch, you know. But anyway. Well, um, listen, uh, if, I, if, if, if a picture of Steve Wynn in short shorts and me masturbating in front of Steve Wynn is turning your girlfriend on, then your girlfriend has some problems. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> No, no, it's you. Oh, it's She's me. Not okay. About Steve Wynn. Okay, that okay. makes me feel better. Thank you, thank you. I, I can actually yeah. see her too. Steve Wynn is blind, so yeah. Okay, go yeah. ahead. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, go I ahead. I believe I believe that uh, Steve Wynn is kind of sick uh, upstairs a little bit, even though he is Republican and conservative. But you, I, I do want to tell you how much I respect you because you've always given me. I, I, I'm saying this for all your listeners right now. We are the opposites, but you've always respectfully given me airtime to speak my mind. And a lot of the things that you've said to me uh, or I, I've considered and researched, and, and I, I honestly have to say, hey, man, the man's right. So, uh, you know, just to put it out there for your listeners, because I am one of them and I respect you highly, um, you know, you've like the guy earlier, I really wanted to speak to Stretch, and I really wanted to speak to uh, to Rashid to commend those uh, those two brothers. Um, but I didn't get a chance because you wasted your time on someone that aggravated you, that you were <laughs> perfectly gladly – no, listen. Yeah. You were perfectly gladly able to let him speak. Yeah. And and then tell him your view, but he kept on stomping. Well, Ron, let me make a promise you. to you. And I'm, I'm up against a hard break, but let me make a promise to you, Ron. We are going to get uh, Stretch Sanders back on the show, and I promise you I will give you ample time to speak with him. Sound like a plan? Well, yeah, it does, but promise me I can be on the uh, on the air with you someday that you'll invite me. I would really like well, that. Well, only if your girlfriend really like only if your girlfriend shows up too. <laughs> All right, Ron. Yeah. Well, we'll make that happen, my man. And I by the way, I do appreciate those kind words. That means a lot. Hey, thanks for the call, Ron. All right, Ron. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, we got to take a break. When we come back, this is going to be a lot of fun. Uh, we're going to be speaking with David Jenkins Jr. He is a transfer, going to be playing at UNLV. We'll take a quick break. Be back right after this. You're listening to the Vegas Take.